Um, we, we found that at the moment by all states and territories in a, shared, a program of shared inquiry research on matters of policy uh, interest to each, each of those jurisdictions. So what I'll touch on today is some of the findings from that over the last, the last couple of years. The underlying thing, I think, listening to the, some of the discussions yesterday and this morning is, I think that the, 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 the provocative question would be, what role is there for agriculture in the future of regional Australia? We've, we've clearly grown, I think Australia's uh, grown around uh, resource development, resource ex exploitation right, right from uh, the, the very early days. And we've, 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 uh, agriculture has a sort of a seemingly natural role in that, but I think that's changing, and I'll give you a couple of examples of that today. Regional no longer equals rural. There's a there's big shift, as, as Serena alluded to. Uh, your regional cities are very different places to your small country towns, and, and, and some of your small country towns are heavily rural. A lot of them are not. I'll run through some of that too. Uh, the topic of the talk was, the title of the talk was around uh, pe people and productivity. So I want to talk a little bit about the, the changes that uh, increasing productivity are bringing to uh, regional areas. And then lastly, finish up by looking where the, where the employment growth industries are in regions and what that will mean for the changing shape of our regional communities. We had that come up a little bit already this morning. Starting, it's a myth that uh, there's this great drain of population from the centre of Australia to the coast. Uh, there are certainly areas in Australia that are uh, where their populations are uh, shrinking. There's, 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 there's a number of those, and generally they are in, in the inland areas, in many inland areas. But overall, even those rural areas, those uh, what, what we think of as those most regional areas, as a group, their populations are holding pretty steady. So that that's, tells us that there are some averages. Are, we, we suffer at the institute from the tyranny of averages. Averages, in this sense, mean that there are some places where their populations are shrinking, but there are also quite a number where they are growing. So overall, that group of inland places, their populations grew slightly, around 1.6% between the two censuses. If we look at more up-to-date data, it's around an, a, a sort of a, almost a 1% growth over the last 17 years. Our industry and service hubs, which are those uh, larger regional towns that, aren't quite, that, that don't make the grade of a regional city, uh, they've grown at just over 3%. Our regional cities have grown at about 8%. This is at the same period where the metro growth was around 10% for, the, for our uh, greater capital city. So the regional city growth is pretty strong. The largest, the highest growth rates have been in what we, what we at the Institute call the connected lifestyle regions, which are those sort of buffer areas around the capital. So in, in, our, in this southeast New South Wales, we're thinking about southern highlands, uh, out, to, out past Newcastle, it's those outer, really long distance commuter belts. That they're very fast growing around the, and, and all of the places like that have, have grown quite quickly over the last uh, 15 years of, of this century. But of course our, uh, our agricultural workforce has shrunk in that time. Uh, the, the green part of that chart shows agricultural employment as peaking at around just under 600,000 uh, around the Second World War and then dropping now to about 350. So that's not a huge drop uh, in terms of total numbers, uh, but relative, of course, to the, 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 the growth in the total population is very significant decline in the, in the relative importance, the relative share of agriculture, this is in primary agricultural production, as an employer, that's the blue line. So it's dropped from employing around a quarter of the people at that peak down to about three or 4% now across the country as a whole. It's no longer the significant employer that it was. The nature of regional jobs have changed quite significantly. This is from a, uh, there, we, where was it? there we go, we'll go back to this one. Oh, these, these are coming in back to front. <laughs> this is coming from, can you see that? No, there you go. Okay. <coughs> we have a, a uh, okay, let me go one further forward. No, there we go, sorry. Uh, so we, have, we put up a tool uh, a little while ago. So the Dep Department of Jobs and Small Business runs what they call the Internet Vacancy Index, which tells you right now, well, actually within the last sort of three or four weeks, what the most in-demand jobs were all across the country. Uh, we think this is a great tool because it shows you the, the, the depth and breadth of, of, of employment requirements. So I thought in preparing this, I thought I could do the sort of the, the classic demographer slash economic story about how the employment mix has changed in regions and I'd show you the agriculture going down, other ones going up. But I thought I'd skip all that and jump straight to what's happening now. So these, these numbers are from uh, December this year and they show the changing mix of uh, jobs that are currently needed in regional Australia. Now, we, uh, we added those up uh, in, when, we, when we first put this out in October, there were 47,000 vacancies in regional Australia. At the moment, there are about 42,000. There's a lot more in the cities because there are more people there. But there's a significant number of jobs going begging at the moment in regional Australia. And what I want to show you here is the mix. So you can see here that the largest single group in Gippsland, even Gippsland, right, which is 
which we think of as, as, as very much a sort of rural slash regional area, the largest single uh, group of, of, of jobs going, 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 going begging at the moment are in the professionals category, and you can see a lot of those are in health, uh, and some of those are in ed education and other services. So you've got the current vacancy mix in, uh, what have we got there? We've got about, about 300 professionals just in Gippsland, right? We haven't got a huge population there, but there's a, there's a significant number of vacancies across these uh, medium and high skilled levels in professionals and managers. You can see there's also quite a number of trade jobs there, technical and trade being the next, next, next biggest group. Uh, and we can also have a quick look at those, I think. Yeah, there they are. Uh, so we're looking at uh, food trades workers. So again, Gippsland, not, 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 not a real hotspot for sort of food processing, agri-processing, but uh, we've got about over 80 jobs there at the moment vacant uh, in terms of food processing. This is the nature of the change of the job mix in regional Australia. Uh, Gippsland overall, you can see that dark line is the profession, so over, over a long period there's been a significant growth in the, uh, if you look at these internet vacancies over time, in the numbers of professionals and slower growth but steady growth in some of those other higher medium skilled service categories. That tells us that our communities are changing. The nature of the, these are different sorts of people to the ones that have been working. Our biggest challenge, and I think somebody alluded, I think Emma alluded to, to, to and, and so did uh, uh, Liam actually, it was really nice. That community infrastructure around with, with the, 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 the depth and breadth of skills and occupations in our smaller communities and in our regional centres is absolutely crucial to the ongoing viability of any investable prospects. We need to have that mix of uh, services, we need to have the people there to, 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 uh, to take on those jobs. And one of the biggest challenges for our communities, actually almost all of them in fact, even their regional cities, is attraction and retention of people to fill these jobs. So this labour needs, and we're going to be talking a little bit about this morning, it's not just the pickers and the packers. We've got significant problems in, in medium and high school jobs across a range of professional occupations across Australia too. Uh, now, where agriculture fits in that is rapidly changing. Uh, and what I liked about some of the discussions this morning, we've, we've talked about uh, the need to grow the sector as a whole, $100 billion, really very, very important. But the trajectory that agriculture, agricultural production's been on has been one of uh, efficiency, productivity gains. And that's particularly important in that economic sense when we're, do when we're looking at like with like. So it's very clear that from our traditional staples of agricultural production, the reason that Australia is maintaining its international competitiveness is that we can do more with less people. That's why that employment number of people employed in primary ag agriculture has dropped so significantly. This group, you may have seen them uh, in the UK, have now picked, I think, a couple of crops uh, from their hands-free hectare. So it's all automated. It's playing around, it's, it's technology, it's, it, it's, it's the stuff the nerd, ner nerdy kids like to do at school, but it's where some of this is going and it's where our technology is taking us. When we look at the role of agriculture, we tend to, in, in, these, uh, in this, this, this bit of data we've, we've drawn on the, on the people side, so again we're looking at employment, but what this shows us is that in fact, agriculture is very widespread, but a, a true reliance on agriculture in terms of it being a very significant proportion of the local labour force is actually relatively isolated in Australia. We've got some of these inland areas where there are quite high proportions of people involved in agriculture. These are the ones for whom the prospects for agriculture and the trade-off between technology and people are going to be the most significant. Generally, these percentages are higher in small places because that's the, that they don't have that broader economic base, so those agricultural jobs take up a significant part uh, of the overall employment mix. Food processing is absolutely fascinating. We, we're very keen at the Institute, as are I think most of the people in the room, around, around value adding and getting more value for our, uh, our production before it reaches markets. Food processing in Australia is even more concentrated uh, than agricultural production. So there's a handful of places in Australia where, that, where there are reasonably significant proportions of people involved in food growing. Uh, Northwest Tasmania, indigo, some of that uh, fruit processing around there. Barossa clearly stands out on this measure, which is a relief to me as, a, 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 as, as an analyst, because if it didn't stand out, I'd be in trouble. But this measure does seem to work well for picking out places that we know of as, and have that reputation as being high in food processing. The interesting thing for us at the moment at the Institute is when we looked at this over time, these uh, food processing specialised areas are actually migrating to the cities. They're migrating to the airports and those uh, transport nodal facilities is where the investment's going. So while we are still very keen on, on food processing as a key part of our agricultural sector going forward, uh, the challenge for regional communities is that uh, we have a you know, very deregulated investment environment in this, in this country, quite rightly. 
the investment is not going to our regional places. The investment in food processing is going to our capital cities. Now, that's fine in an aggregate sense because it means that as a country we're generating more value when the value of exports is going up. But that trend alone will not help our regional areas and will not diversify the activities base uh, around food processing in our regions. There's a handful of places where, this, where that's not the case, where there is depth and, and specialisation which is being invested in, but generally uh, the migration of those food processing jobs is actually to the, the capital cities. I want to touch briefly about automation uh, more broadly too than just agriculture. We put out some work last year about how uh, various jobs, uh, the, the automation of a range of jobs is going to Im impact on regional areas. Ag's, ag's a key one. Uh, we took data here from uh, Frey and Osborne, some people in the UK who have been working on this for a number of years, and we took their list of occupations and rated them by, or they'd rated them by sort of risk of, of automation. Overall, about 22% of jobs in regional Australia are at risk of automation. The jobs most at risk are low skill, labour intensive and routine ones. The jobs least, ri least at risk are the higher skill, high care and non-routine ones. Now we didn't come up with those weightings, this is these, these European researchers have done that. When we looked at them through a, a sort of slightly jaundiced eye, we could see that the, the ones that they identified as high risk were actually not the, uh, uh, the, the, the labour in factories anymore. That, that, that sort of wave had passed, I think, in the, in the 80s, 90s and early 2000s. Their next category of high risk jobs, funnily enough, were often our entry level service sector jobs. So the kind of, it's, you know, for those of you that have automated your uh, coffee ordering process at your coffee shop, it's that kind of stuff. It's the McDonald Lydation where you sort of touch the screen when you go in. Uh, I think uh, Qantas and Virgin were one of the, some of the first to introduce that in Australia with their sort of automated kiosk. So they, these are all uh, sensible corporate strategies to, to reduce overheads by reducing a, a, the key cost of uh, uh, many of these larger enterprises, which is, which is the labour cost. So you will automate that and that reduces their operating costs and improves their profitability. How far that will roll out across regional Australia is a very, very interesting question because uh, this is a bit of a digression, I've got to stop these digressions. Um, but one of the things that we know about regional Australia is for people that have been through this agricultural productivity change, the, the, often regional communities will, will, will find synonymous the idea of productivity with job loss. So whether our local regional businesses will take up some of these technology enhancing, labour reducing uh, technologies uh, and improve their own profitability as a result, or whether there'll be some resistance to that by those business owners because they've seen the impact of that in other industries, or whether there'll be some resistance to that on behalf of us as consumers buying into that because we've also seen the consequence of that. I don't know, it's going to be a very interesting piece of research to, to follow over the next couple of years because we know that there'll be a strong, a strong drive to improve uh, productivity through some of these uh, tech technology applications. Um, I don't think, uh, I'll, I'll skip over those ones, the, when we, we've got a, a tool up on the web which shows how this, uh, our measure of sort of job vulnerability plays out over uh, regional Australia. It, uh, it emphasises places, funnily enough, which are not manufacturing centres but, but which are actually ser large service centres for large regional catchments because they tend to have a, a high proportion of jobs in those s service centres uh, which are of that sort of lower skill, medium skill uh, service uh, orientation which uh, means they're slightly more vulnerable as a, as a, as a, as a regional centre uh, to future vulnerability. But it's not all bad news. Uh, significant growth in jobs brought across regional Australia as well as the, the, the capital cities. High tech jobs, high touch jobs and high care jobs, these are the ones where there's significant job growth. Now, you know, we've been talking about this sort of stuff for, for a few years, but it is no surprise that they mirror very closely with those high levels of demand that I showed you very early on. What's currently vacant uh, across regional Australia, very much in exactly those groups. High tech, high touch, high care. These are things that machines can't do. Uh, things that you need a person for, whether it's a caring role or a, a, a high uh, professional role or whether it's a, a, a skilled service role. Uh, I won't jump into this, this just reinforces that over the next five years those, those trends are going to continue. What I want to leave you with is this one. Um, we don't think of, we think very much, a lot of people think of healthcare and social assistance as a kind of mendicant industry that's driven by uh, health policy and government policy and all public sector money. In fact, we are seeing uh, that this industry, these, these, these pair of, of industries are very significant drivers of employment growth in regional Australia, right down to some of our smaller centres. Uh, we've got, uh, we're going to release some work in a couple of weeks around this. Uh, 
uh, it's a health and social assistance, fascinating mix of public and private. So, so while they're broadly under the umbrella of our sort of national health scheme, uh, the private sector is playing a key role in investing in services, additional health and allied health services in, our, in, in ever smaller communities as they see markets for doing that. So what I'm painting here is a picture of an agricultural sector which has uh, been a, a very significant employer and driver of regional economies. Uh, now, some of that driver element is still there, but as an employer, the, all the momentum is shifting uh, to, to other sectors, particularly these service sectors. Now, that's changing the nature of the people, changing the nature of jobs, and, and inevitably changing the nature of our regional communities as well. Uh, a lot of this is summarised in a publication that we put up uh, 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 mid, mid last year on the next wave of automation and its impact on regional labour markets. So I better wrap it up. Um, but there's a bit of an overview on the changing nature of the regional workforce and the role of agriculture. Thank you. <laughs>